it is an honor to welcome our today's speaker apurva thakur she is going to give us an insight on an important topic effective communication skills for enhancing interpersonal relations the stage is over to you ma'am thank you so much mansi okay so whoever uh, is not very aware of what i do from where i belong and how i'm here uh, i'm a lawyer by profession and an educator by passion um am i clear mansi is the audio loud and clear yes ma'am absolutely right so um yes it's been seven and a half years now that i'm in the legal profession and i'm practicing as a defense counsel along with that uh, i've been a faculty member of delhi university campus law center jamia hamdard law colleges um in both these positions professionally i would say there is no lawyer and there is no educator on the earth who does not know how to communicate well so and if the quality suffers the work suffers so simply put um any successful lawyer even if the uh, word successful can be subjective for many or any successful or satisfied content educator would at the end of the day uh say just one common thing about what they did right and that would be effective communication so as the topic uh, stands today effective communication for enhancing interpersonal relations i would say um i'm honored to have received this opportunity and this platform to you know first and foremost to actually express my views on uh, this important topic plus this is uh, those soft skills which set you apart from others in the industry wherever you working however you are working or even if you are not even if you are a brilliant homemaker or a student or uh, uh, living a retired life i would say statistically and uh, analytically speaking they say 75% of our waking hours is spent on communicating we communicate knowingly unknowingly verbally non verbally through body language through expressions through uh gestures through of course words written or oral what is strange or what is great about this statistic when you say 75% of waking hour of an average individual is spent communicating i would very proudly and confidently remark from my own experience and insights that it is much more 75% of waking hours spent on communication is actually not the accurate data accurate data is we are communicating all the time when we are awake there is not a single moment when we are not communicating there is a notion that communication as a word as a term as a concept has emanated or represents an exchange of information between persons like when we use the term interpersonal so between persons right but who stopping you from indulging into a leisurely self talk is that not communication is a reflection of thoughts in your own mind not a communication it is at the end of the day when you're reflecting you're contemplating you're pondering upon certain things you are you know talking to yourself in the middle of the day or at the end of the day uh, expressing gratitude to the almighty or whatever it might be all of that is communication and when are we not doing it apart from the time maybe 7 to 8 hours that when we sleep that's the only time we don't communicate our clothes communicate our grooming sense communicates our etiquette communicates purva hello uh so having said that having introduced myself as a lawyer and educator who has just been communicating all her professional life till now and each and every one of us here each and every one of us here does not even understand the magnanimity of this 
topic i would say in their everyday life without even going into the depths or merits or academics or concepts of this matter right you are educated you are not you are literate you are not you are rich you are poor you are working you are not but you are communicating till the time you are you are not dead of course so when you are alive that means as we, as they say alive and kicking it basically means alive joyous doing something doing our bit contributing to the world how do you do it without communication so yes when you are communicating why not do it effectively that is the question here and what does this term effective really mean effective would mean something as uh, people from the management or people from uh, working in corporates would agree is uh, equivalent to the word productive when you use the word productive for certain features for certain services for certain output we feel you know happy using the word productive oh so and so was productive oh this project resulted into this output which showed that you know our organization was you know more productive than whatever relatively is being talked about similarly when we're talking about individuals when you're talking of soft skills like communication and using the prefix effective what it basically intends to do is wants to emphasize how your communication skills should be is it actually producing the results you want is it doing for you what you want the question stands there for that i would say i just did a humble bit of research before uh, coming here so that uh, i feel i've added value to the time of all those who are attending this and so kind of you to have spent time to attend this thank you so much for whatever time you spend here um that little research that i did uh, gave me a lot of insights in terms of not only statistics but also uh, the theoretical parts of communication i would say which we hardly think about in everyday life and as they say you only gain in practice when you're good in theory whether it be any profession whether you, you be an artist whether you be a person from the corporate background whether you be a professional working professional whether you be an entrepreneur doesn't matter you have to practice what you have studied what you have observed what you have read what you have not read customs usages all these things which you don't find in books but there is some rule there is some principle there is some unsaid there are some unsaid doctrines there are some precepts and there is some theory to it so talking about theory here um i read a very interesting fact which said there are three broad ways by which human beings communicate on this planet um uh, and that can be classified as words voice tone and body language when you say words you understand it very well okay words yes we know written oral whatever it is and we think this does the trick this is what communication comprises of you using words right then somebody comes up and uh, tells you oh it's also the pitch it's also the intonation it's the voice tone that you're using which is making you uh, different from the other communicating the same line mechanically let's say and uh, that's what actors do brilliantly the the dramatics involved the histrionics involved that's what lawyers do in courtrooms that's what many a times uh, educators do whether it be primary school whether it be senior secondary whether it be college or at university level education if you're a storyteller if you're a good communicator uh there are times when you have modulated your voice you have used certain kind of pitch to convey certain meaning like when you say what and when you say what you know there is a difference in tone in communicating many messages and then somebody comes up and tells you oh it's not only words and voice tone did you also know body language comprises so much of communication and you say where are the statistics i just knew words do the trick for me and then comes in the research globally it has been seen that words constitute just around and i would use the word around to be safe here because uh, statistics and data keeps on changing as we know as per surveys however this has been the standards over decades words constitute around 7 to 10% of the impact of communication that you have on others and the situations that you are in while voice tone of a person communicating constitutes around 38 to 42% of the impact of communication 
and at the same time body language comprises 55 to 60 percent of the impact of communication in any given situation so if i see the range here and if i discuss it out with you you would understand and you would agree each one of you here that words are the most minimal portion of the impact that you're having communicating with others while body language constitutes the highest somewhere in the middle lies voice too when we are a little clear about this there are certain doubts which arise in our mind when we hear the word communicate things like how can a communicate better than b how do i know what is the formula what are the standards and then you understand okay there are no standards but maybe there are personalities maybe there are nature types of individuals the way they communicate so without going too deep into it i would just say uh, many of you must have heard it many of you would be hearing it for the first time but i bet you have met all these kinds of people in your life till now the first kind of people who exist in terms of form of communication the way they communicate is passive communication and those kinds of individuals which engage in it uh basically to put it short passive communication is a style in which you allow or you uh, open the floor for others to tend to walk over you what that means is if i am feeling a certain way and i am a person who communicates passively i would never express my feelings and i'll just you know be okay in getting treated as a carpet or a doormat and that's how they are and that's maybe not derogatory for them uh, another type of individuals on this planet believe in communicating in an aggressive style which is a complete like a north pole and a south pole situation one having a passive communication style would never even like to express what they truly feel they would just want the waves to go by smoothly and passively they would as the word suggests just be an observer just not try to be actively involved not like any kind of conflict or so to say not even conflicts but they would not even want to give their opinion about many things which is not healthy and we all know that however those who are indulging in aggressive kind of communication would go all out there to express their opinions and that too in a rude and disrespectful manner there is nothing wrong in expression right the constitution of india guarantees that freedom of speech and expression sorry that's a lawyer talking however anybody who's communicating in communicating in an aggressive style would make the other person feel as if they are walking on eggshells and this uh, phrase of walking on eggshells as it suggests literally really means making the other person feel uncomfortable making that other person feel repelled right so such is your communication that you're hostile you're rude you're disrespectful you're aggressive belligerent right then there are those kind of people who are a mix of both a passive and aggressive very dangerous lethal combination they would not want to express what they feel but at the same time you would also not know how they are feeling by the looks of it you cannot judge right but they would be harboring grudges they would want to just get back they would be spiteful vengeful say okay hamare sath aisa kiya tha now i'll get back at you right and that is why i said it's lethal you don't let anybody judge you in in not the negative sense of the word judge but in the sense of evaluation not let anybody assess what's going on inside you and then suddenly you get back at that person not very wise right to develop a healthy relationship uh and when you talk of the last uh, kind of you know people which exist as per theories of personalities and the way people communicate that is ones indulging in assertive communication by assertive communication uh, it's meant that somebody who is firm yet kind and polite courteous yet quite as the word itself english word itself suggests assertive about his or her opinions and expressions they would say okay i did not like this bit that you said could you you know do something about it could you alter it in some way could could this be done 
they would try and negotiate in a convincing, persuasive and win-win manner in something that makes the other person happy or comfortable as well, at the same time, does not prejudice your own interests. All right. Uh, so Divine Darpan writes, Madam, it's going too fast. Please slow down a bit. Surely. So were there bits, bits you did not understand? You can put that down in the chat and I'll try and clarify it in the question and answer. Thank you so much. All right. So along with the forms or ways or styles of communication that I discussed, these four types, passive, aggressive, passive aggressive, and assertive, uh, there comes the responsibility. And when I talk about responsibility, uh, I talk in sense of maintaining healthy relationships. Now the question arises, what are these kinds of relationships that we are talking of? Let's put this in context in a better manner. Interpersonal relations can be anything starting from you haggling with a vegetable vendor at the beginning of the day to you going to work and discussing out terms uh, of certain projects or contracts or um, activities in your routine work schedule with your colleagues or with your superiors or subordinates, and then ranging to family relations, personal relations, love relations, right? So interpersonal relations in itself, and we would all agree, uh, span a wide range, not only work, not only personal, not only stranger encounters, not only encounters as a tourist, but also anyone everyone who is human and who is communicating with you on a subconscious or a conscious level or on a verbal or a non-verbal communication way or just the way you look at people you conduct yourself you smile or you don't um, you frown or you don't and the tone you use to address people all those kinds of situations and incidents are consciously or subconsciously making you fall in an interpersonal relation communication, right? So when we are falling into those situations, knowingly or unknowingly, intentionally or unintentionally, happily or sadly, why not make the best of it? Why not turn around situations and make them profitable for you, not in monetary and economic sense, but in sense of developing long lasting healthy relations. And when I say healthy, that's not only because you have some random profile on LinkedIn and you're looking for a job and you've got it and you're happy. No, it's not just that kind of healthy. It's those relations which are beyond any kind of demarcated lines of conscious networking, which are just there because they make you human. They make you what you are. You are be because you have those relations around you and same applies to them. So just for the sake of making this world more beautiful, just for the sake of adding value to others as, and your own existence, why not communicate effectively? When I think about it and the more I think about it, I become passionate to dig deeper. And when I dug a little deep for you know, the sake of humble research for this session, I uh, understood there are many reasons why people cannot or find difficulty in communicating effectively with others. Those in technical terms are called barriers. Barriers as in English, and anybody who's having problems in understanding English can write in the chat, and I would try and make it simpler for them in Hindi, as I do not uh, know any other language, at least for this forum. I know Bangla, but I don't know how many people would be understanding that. Okay. So uh, talking about barriers or talking about obstacles, there are a few barriers or obstacles which comes to your mind, I'm sure, when you're communicating with people. You know, first of all, when we, we think of communication, we think of language. And that's how human beings are wired. You know, as I said, that as much as I might uh, harp about the fact that words constitute minimal impact of communication while voice tone constitutes more and body language constitutes the maximum of it. Still, at the end of the day, human brain is programmed such when you use the word communication, language comes into our mind. And yes, let me tell you, language is an important barrier. It can make or break your communication with others. And that's the reason why people want to read and understand more and more languages. Linked to that is understanding people's cultures. If you do not understand cultures, 
you would miss out on precise points of body language and how to put your message across in a more effective fashion, right? Uh, so yes, af apart from language and cultural barrier, there are also barriers like uh, physical or, or hierarchical barriers, as they say. Let's say you are in an organization or even in a family, if we talk of a Hindu undivided family or you're talking of karta, head of family, and you are just one of those in the in the entire scheme of things, junior most in the family, not taking the decisions. Or in an organization, you're a subordinate, just joined, intern, uh, project manager, doesn't matter, but you have the CEO as your boss, let's say. And there is some hierarchy, there is some barrier in terms of how you communicate. Do any of you think and agree that you can go all out and communicate casually, informally, hey boss, what's up? You know, will that work? Good afternoon, Vinod. That's uh, actually afternoon. Yeah, thanks. So uh, hierarchical barriers, yes, is what disrupts your communication. Let's say I'm a person who loves informal communication. I love expressing my thoughts over, let's say, blogs or, or communication medium like WhatsApp. But will that work if I'm talking to the senior most uh, individual in my organization and I have something to you know, express my grievance on or give some feedback? or you know, just uh, convey certain opinion about certain activity or project going on. Do you think that will work vis-a-vis -vis or versus if I talk of communicating uh, via emails and that too written very properly, formally, and not in a letter to editor style maybe, but in whatever language or framework uh, that organization appreciates mails in. So that, uh, gets us to the point of context. It gets us to the point of perception also. And that is an important barrier in itself. After talking about language, culture, and hierarchical uh, obstacles, there is something called as a perceptual barrier. When you fail to perceive how the other person will, you know, receive your message and process it and understand it and then react, because that's what communication is, right? Isn't communication exchange of information or even those little moments of self-talk that I talked about. When you're processing certain information, sending or receiving it, and that entire uh, phenomena is termed as a, a communication uh, situation, right? And when we are doing it nicely, effectively, trying to build trust, trying to build harmony through it, um, engaging others in it as well, taking others' opinions in a comfortable, harmonious fashion, that leads to an effective, healthy communication, uh, which also leads and results in healthy relationships, which is very logical, right? You do not need theory and facts to understand that. However, at this point, when I talked about perceptual barriers and perception, there's something else which is coming to my mind here, which I should not miss out on. And that is the emotional obstacle. Many a times, let's say you're very happy, you're in this particular emotional stage or phase in life, or maybe it's very temporary for a moment, and you say something to somebody which would not have been appropriate otherwise, and it backfires later without you knowing. Let's say you're angry, you said something you didn't want to, and that's why wise people, and also our sadhus and Indian babas who you know we follow or we revere or you know we have heard a lot about, we look up to. They always said one thing, and even like Chanakya said, he was one of the wisest persons who lived on this planet. And uh, he said, don't talk when you're angry, you know, I refrain from communicating when you're angry. And there is a reason for it. When you're too happy, or when you're too sad, or when you're too low, or when you're just too confused, you should know when to shut up. You should know when to not talk. And that is the wisest in the quality in any individual, I would say. As lawyers, as educators, uh, I can just speak for myself. I'm sure many of you have experienced that in your own small or big ways. When you communicate when you are in a certain emotional phase or stage, and you feel you should not have said a particular thing or have said something which you didn't, it backfires in a way that you cannot repair. Many a time, like they say in Hindi, agar zaban se koi and what that means is when you utter a word, you cannot take it back. Or when you communicate in a certain way, let me put it this way. When you communicate in a certain way, the damage 
or the benefit is done and you would know it only later it's just like the game of karma right sooner or later you would come to know the impact however why not make it wise why not make it comfortable so after talking a little about the barriers and obstacles in effective communication i have not uh, deliberately touched upon all of them as that would make this session quite theoretical which many of you might not enjoy uh, there are certain uh, i would say not a formula but certain observations made by many thinkers uh, which have has led to a seven c's of communication being followed worldwide as a checklist to understand whether you're communicating in the proper manner or not you can subtract or add one or two uh seven c's of communication and i would read so that i do not misinterpret anything firstly stand starts with clarity so if you do not have clarity here in your mind while you are uh, expressing while you are you know i use the word expressing because if i use the word talking i would be misguiding you communication is not only talking and we did mention that earlier so when you have clarity in your mind you know exactly what you are going to express what you're going to utter what you're going to project right so how do you get that clarity of course depends from situation to situation what kind of position are you in who are you interacting with what is the context and what is the message you want to put across along with this does somebody have their mic on thank you so much so after clarity you have another c coming in so because i told you there are seven c's then that is being concise i'm sure you've heard of the simple english word being concise when you are being concise when you are applying brevity to your communication activities or situations you are saving time of people and just as money or maybe more valuable is others is time as is yours so if you are saving time of individuals at the same time you are clear and crisp in how and what you communicate there is no way you will go wrong right so after these two c's you must be wondering uh, you know apurva mentioned it all it's just clarity and being concise is good enough for many situations but hold on there is more so there is something called as being concrete in uh, what you express and how you express now how is this being concrete different from being clear be concrete would mean having solid substantial things to say contribute or communicate if you have something frivolous to communicate do not take you know expect others to take you seriously because that is not going to happen however if you're in a informal communication situation things might be different let's say you're going out on a movie uh, for a movie with friends and uh, you decide to communicate frivolously jokingly you know uh, making all kinds of uh, antics making a fool of yourself they are your childhood friends you are at liberty that's all right they are not going to judge you they are not going to benefit or harm you in any such manner maybe and then you feel oh i can be myself but how if you got that independence even in professional and formal situation you can get that with certain level of wisdom so when you check yourself about what you are going to convey and you feel okay let's say i was the judge let's say nobody else but i was the one to whom i was going to convey what i'm going to convey do i think i would have liked that uh sentence or that communication or that projection coming my way from a person of my status in work in personal life in relationships so status is not only socio economic status status as a psychologist sociologists and jurists rightly point out is also the status we enjoy in our own social circles in our primary secondary groups in our formal informal environments right so um when you are concrete about messages when you have substance to add when you are solidifying your uh, mental um, concepts there is no way people can doubt you they would know oh she has come all armed or equipped she knows what she is saying she is not wasting our time and then after those three c's you have something which is very logical and that is being coherent what do i mean by being coherent 
as the word coherence uh, suggests in literal English, and you must have uh, read it many a times, coherent is basically uh, being understandable in a way that is logical, in a way that is rational, in a way that is flowing in a manner in which it should. It's not uh, blocked here and there. It's not uh, haywire, right? So that is what being coherent is. You know what you're saying. You know where you have to give the pauses. You know where to stop. You know where to start. Uh, you know the first sentence is adding to the second one or your looks or expression are adding to what you are saying or your voice intonation is going with your body language and going with the thoughts that you're expressing. All of that makes it very compact, makes it coherent and takes me to the next C, which is being complete and comprehensive. So you project some kind of communication which is complete, which is comprehensive, which is not making the other person just guess that, oh, it was a blink and miss. What did she just say? What did she just project? What did she just reflect? What did she, he or, uh, or he want to um, uh, convey? I mean, you were left guessing. Then how can you make a decision in favor of that other person? You cannot. And that's like that other person shooting themselves on their foot, right? So after all these C's, there are two or three more which uh, steal the game and they are being courteous at the same time being correct. When you are correct, it's not necessary that you are correct in eyes of people or you are correct in eyes of the world or in eyes of morality or societal constructs. It's you're correct in your own thinking and perception and that also comes from a wise self-evaluation of what you are going to project or convey or communicate. Being courteous is nothing else but being cordial, being respectful, being polite towards others' feelings, being a little empathetic, let's say, and using kind words. It's not going to harm you, but maybe it makes someone's day. It's free, isn't it? Also, at the end, I would like to add one C after all these seven Cs, and it's... Uh, amazing how uh, fast we just talked about it and we don't even realize it uh, lies in all the communication situations that we go through every minute and second of our life till the time we are awake and we are alive and that is being careful and contemplative and this see i've added deliberately uh, and let me tell you i have googled this beforehand and i did not find it i was disappointed and i was like why is some anybody not talking about it can you be careless when you're communicating? Can you not contemplate about what you are bringing to the table, right? What value are you adding or taking away from people? You have to contemplate, you have to be careful, you have to be maybe in certain situations even cautious, though that term has a negative connotation in certain sense, and that's why I refrain from using it. However, that experience I take away from my personal life of being an educator and of being an advocate or a legal practitioner is that if you're careful, you save your client, you save the judge, and you save yourself a lot of inconvenience and embarrassment. Um, at the same time, having said all of this, many a times people wonder that uh, why do we need to communicate effectively in interpersonal relations, apart from maybe making friends, apart from building long lasting relations and building trust, or maybe establishing some professional connections. What does it do to our quality of life to actually introspect and uh, expend and spend so much energy, time, and thoughts of ours, of our precious head in trying to understand whether we are communicating effectively or not? Why should we do that? Why should we indulge in it in the first place? Okay, there are a lot of benefits about it, but uh, is it worth it? And then you just ask yourself, will it make a difference one day if you die? And the answer there lies in the kind of feeling that you have brought forth to the world to others. How have you made others feel? And how do you make others feel depends on how you communicate. Nothing else, nothing more and nothing less. What you do for them and what you not do for them comes later. But how you convey, how you communicate, how you project, how you reflect your thoughts, your opinions, your views, your nature, your um, emotions 
about the other person or about the other organization or about an, another circle or network or religion makes or breaks the game. It's not only your image, it's about your existence. So if any of us or all of us care about why we exist on this planet, and as Robin Sharma has written in his famous book, who will cry when you die? It just boils down to this. How did you make that one person feel when you woke up? How did you make those 10 people feel you interacted with uh, during the day when you actually went to sleep at the end of the day and you are reflecting about how your day went? All right, so uh, having said that and having uh, reiterated again and again about the importance of effective communication in enhancing interpersonal relations, I would just uh, like to add, skipping all the theory here, that there are certain tips of how you improve your communication. Of course, we talked a lot about removing barriers, trying to work consciously on that, you know, understanding people by the forms and ways they communicate, um, trying to improve upon yourself there because you improve only what you know. What you do not know, what you do not evaluate, you cannot improve upon. So only when you know the forms or the ways of communication that exist, of which form or which personality do you fall under is when you can think of improving yourself, right? Isn't that very logical? Having said that, there are certain very useful tips that you can use in your everyday life, uh, see the difference, Use it with your primary group first so that there is no risk. Maybe use it with your siblings, use it with parents after the session today. See the difference that it makes. If you like it, continue, improvise on it, read more on this. If you do not like it, try to go on to the next one. That might benefit you, right? And also uh, there is no uh, one size fits all kind of a formula here. It's soft skills that we are talking of. It's human beings that we are talking of at the end of the day. So the first and most important tip here, I would say, and I would quickly go through this because I would want to uh, spend a lot of time in interaction and question answer, much more than 10 minutes, which was given on the creative. Captain Shekhar, please forgive me for that. <laughs> but yes, it's just that I love interacting. And when the session is on communication, it's very ironical if I don't, right? So uh, the first one in terms of tips is using active listening powers. When I talk about being an active listener, what does that mean? You want to communicate, you want to want others to hear you, you want others to give a patient hearing and uh, a patient audience uh, to you, but you do not want to listen to them. Is it going to work out? It is a two-way street here, ladies and gentlemen, it's a two-way street. When you are communicating and you want the other person to hear you or to take you seriously, if you're not talking, if you're just expressing or conveying through your voice tone or body language, there's not much verbal, nonverbal communication happening in terms of words or, you know, let's say it's just the conduct. And you want somebody to take you seriously or to, you know, abide by what you are trying to reflect or at least uh, be affected in a manner that you want them to be affected by uh you should also think of this two-way street here that what if that person was communicate something similar or even something different doesn't matter to me would i have heard it out would i have found time for that person in my life if my answer is no if my answer boils down to the question wifm what is in it for me then i'm sorry they will ask you the same question and you have to justify it for yourself to be heard first so be an active listener. And when I say active, I'm deliberately not using the word passive here and replacing it with active, right? Anybody can listen or anybody can hear, but when is it called active listening? Hearing of course is much more inferior than listening because if you analyze the concepts, hearing is a very physical sensory organ related thing. But when we are talking of listening, it involves not only your auditory perceptions, but also the way you perceive. When you are perceiving, you're picking up the finer nuances of somebody's message. And it's at the end of the day, a message that the other person is trying to communicate to you, or maybe you are trying to communicate to your own self while introspecting. Of course, we all know we know ourselves best. However, when we are talking about others here, we are talking about any other individual here. What is very important is, 
become an active listener yourself only then can you encourage others or even criticize others for not being such or for being such right so when you are actively listening that means that time neither are you on some abc device neither are you watching a movie and saying oh yeah you are saying something yes like we do all the time in our house with our family because we take them for granted many of us do that i'm guilty of the same on a daily basis i would say and it's good my parents are not listening however they would say oh she's giving some gyan and she doesn't practice it herself however uh, when you're listening actively it not only opens up yourself to the world to what others have to offer to you but also makes you cautious of the people around you what do they think and feel about you is it genuine if it's not genuine uh, can you draw yourself away from such people if it's toxic you feel in your environment though i would not want to use those word for any human however when you feel something is derogatory or degrading to your existence or uh, to your uh, meaning and uh, perception of things you would want to consciously walk away that is something which you identify and understand only when you're active listener who is good to you who is not what is the reason that they are not and what is the reason that they are being nice and kind to you do you really need to know the reason if yes what do you do about it all these questions can be answered only if you listen if you perceive if you absorb actively only then will you be able to be a good speaker as well and many people miss out on that they feel oh speaker oh somebody maybe you know who's not shy of audiences somebody who's a great communicator but then they forget a great communicator is a package it's it's not one or two things uh, gone right it's a package in itself right and the first and foremost important thing as i reiterated is active listening which will take you there second is using more i statements than you statements when you are addressing people that doesn't mean that if there is a reason valid reason to use you you subconsciously and illogically start using i no that is not the way the way is just that whenever we are using you as they say in hindi jab aap kisi pe ungli uthate hain to baki char ungliyan aapke upar uthti hain what that basically means is when you're pointing a finger at someone the other four fingers of yours of that hand are pointing towards you so be cautious whenever you blame somebody or whenever you're trying to put a point across try and be very polite try and be uh, assertive but in a very very gentle fashion in a very accommodating fashion in a very perceptive fashion when you actually uh maybe even know how the other person will react and you are ready to face it and that kind of empathy that kind of sensitivity that kind of compassion comes not overnight it comes from practice as they say humans are born to be compassionate but i feel it's very different uh many thinkers uh, noble jurists and uh, religion heads they feel humans are born to be compassionate humans are born to be those living creatures who know how to love who know how to unconditionally support and encourage others that's what they are here on this planet for but that is far from reality at least in today's time and uh, how we can turn around things depends entirely on us because we can't sit and grumble after a point that's useless we can't just complain about you know uh, and hold grudges about certain people being a certain way maybe they would continue to be that way maybe that is what is suiting them but it can also be that maybe you have triggered something in them the, that they are reacting or responding to you in a particular fashion in fact reacting because responding is a positive word so yeah that brings me to another point do not react try to respond when you respond you will automatically communicate better when you reacting things will go haywire uh using i statements i would just want to end that point by saying uh don't be egocentric by using i okay it's i me myself no not that but just try and say i would feel so and so if this happened in a particular fashion you're just asserting your views or you telling somebody very politely how you felt or how you feeling nothing wrong with that as long as you are not intentionally or maliciously offending anybody 
also when you express your opinions yourself the blame comes only on you it's not that you say oh so and so said that or that other day you were telling me this so maybe you know that gave me this projection that you are like x y z whatever that sounds very rude that that comes across as um, somebody who's very uh, up there you know for no reason very arrogant snooty hired it for no reason right so it's better to say i in my personal opinion i in my humble uh, position uh, feel so and so or you know i would like to you know express this opinion this is my own of course so these kind of statements help the other person understand you are honest about things you are just expressing what you had to and there is nothing more or less to it you are not offending them right only then they will want to be if not affectionate at least sympathetic towards you at least 90% of people or maybe 80 if i said more okay stay aware stay humble and stay aware by saying stay aware what i mean is uh, be thoughtful as i said be perceptive when you have your eyes closed it's like kabutar billi ko dekh ke aankh band kar leti hai but usse billi nahi chali jati what it means is if there is a challenge if there is a problem in front of you and you're closing your eyes you think let me not communicate right now when the tide is gone that's when you know i open up fine that maybe that's how the situation is as you perceive then you're the best judge in that situation however when you are aware of everything going around you your communication gets affected what you're going to put across through your clothing grooming etiquette verbal non verbal communication voice tone will be proper 90% of the time it will be proper because you've thought about it you are aware like they say when people are meditating they focus on their breathing they are aware of their existence themselves right so similar manner be aware of the surroundings be aware of the context be aware of whom you are communicating with be aware of the consequences be aware of the open ended sentences you are using be aware of the clothes you are wearing where you are wearing and with whom you are wearing right so lot of things also use appropriate language remember i had uh, used this term courteous when i was talking about seven c's of communication checklist it links to the same point use appropriate language maybe you cannot be too formal with your childhood friend but you have to be formal with your boss maybe you can be informal to your colleague of 10 years but you have to maintain a certain distance with somebody who's joined just a day ago and doesn't know about your temper tantrums or so called pranks which might be very harmless or any kind of i would say issues that may be particular to you and your temperament and your way of thinking do not impose your thoughts on others without knowing what they feel let's say you are fundamental of uh, very orthodox in some kind of thinking in certain way let's say religion or let's say way of life or let's say um, dining preference you're a vegetarian and you want the entire world to go vegetarian it doesn't work that way right so why don't we hold our thoughts very sweetly to ourselves and whenever we want to express ourselves we use those kind of um symbols i would say rather than language because language is a more specific uh, linguistics is a more specific word to use here but those kinds of symbols and symbols also include language but those kind of symbols that you put out to people to say okay i do not like this however you are free to go ahead with it let's say if i'm a vegetarian by choice which i am uh there are people who very good friends of mine who eat non veg you know uh, dishes in front of me left right center and i would have no qualms about it i would go dining out with them very happily but if they put that one or two pieces of whatever they are eating the flesh blood chicken whatever it be on my plate i might not be very happy and might not want to go out with them again right so that is how a person's thought can be affected by just one act of yours that one act can either make it or break it for you in that particular situation even if you've been friends for decades right so do not take people for granted and try and not impose your thoughts on others at least not before knowing them very well and also after knowing them appreciate them for what they are for their unique individuality even if they are your parents or your children doesn't matter they have their own personality they are born for a particular purpose on this planet which is different from yours respect that right and lastly empathize when i say empathize it just sums up everything i said 
empathizing is the highest level of compassion that you can have for an individual on a day to day basis without even maybe knowing them. So there's somebody you meet in a Delhi metro, I'm from Delhi, so I give that example, or anywhere on the street, and you see that person struggling with something, with, with some luggage, or, you know, generally looking very low, wanting help, um, and that face is screaming out, they're not saying anything to you verbally, but you know, okay, this person is in a deep trouble. You offer help. That other person never asked for help. But you offered it. What, the, what does that project out of you? You are a thinking, sensitive, empathetic individual who cannot bear to see others in pain. Is that not a good quality? Is that not what something you don't have to pay for, neither others do have to pay for, but that act of kindness, not only karmically, but also psychologically comes back to you and makes your day better. If you have added value to even one person before you go to sleep every day, it automatically makes you feel better in that small way. And that maybe makes your day better the next day. Or who knows, somebody observed you doing that little act of kindness and gets back to you uh, in a cordial or polite manner. Nobody knows the way life uh, functions and the way this universe functions. That's quite mystic. However, when we are talking of materialistic, concrete, substantive and non-metaphysical terms here like communication i would just end by saying be empathetic be soft be gentle be contributive towards others space add value wherever you go and when you communicate understand it's not just one line it's not just one episode it's not just one instance it can have ramifications it just like a mind map can have roots and tentacles project yourself accordingly and that's how I would want to end this session from my side. Captain Shekhar, Mansi, are there any questions that people, uh, attendees have? I would want to address them very happily. See in the chat box, so I cannot see any question. But Captain, I can uh, hardly hear you. I said in the chat box, I cannot see any question from the audience, but they are free to ask now. Sure. Is there any question from anyone? All right. Anyone wants to share something of their own? We, we have all grown up communicating. So none of us here can see. We don't know what she's talking about. So, um, why don't we open up? Why don't we communicate? Why don't we interact? Now is the time. Anyone wants to initiate anything? I don't know why they are so shy right now. Maybe they are, they are taking me too seriously. I talked about being contemplative. <laughs> so they are contemplating. <laughs> Maybe. Fine, Mansi. So now it's your turn. You can go ahead yes, with the sir. vote of thanks. Mansi, before the vote okay. of thanks, why don't you ask me something? <laughs> now she'll really hate me for this. But yeah, Mansi, why don't you ask or project or in anything? Like, why don't you just convey something about this session which you liked, you didn't, whatever? Ma'am, actually, I just wanted to say that the session was really amazing. Although I have studied all these in my curriculum. I am a management student, but oh, wow. yes, I really loved the way you spoke and the way you explained. It I thought you would despise nice. me because I have not used any PPT here. No, 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 no. <laughs> it's all right. Great. Great to know. Such lovely individuals and uh, if they don't interact, it's my loss, not theirs. So maybe I'm not lucky today. That's all right. Thank you so much, Captain.